this is a mic'd up Jacob Sheep. You're watching the Tom O'Brien Show. If you take a look at my screen over here, I am on TFNN.com. And the reason why I am on TFNN.com is I'm going to go over to the newsletters tab. I'm going to take a look right here in that first row in the third column. And right there is a mastering probability newsletter by Steve Rhodes. Now, Steve Rhodes also hosts the Trader's Edge at 11 a.m. Eastern Time right here on Tiger Financial News Network. This is a fantastic newsletter if you're looking for some very nice kind of concise information in the mornings and it just builds and builds throughout the week and it covers uh, quite a good amount of, uh, of different topics in the market. Steve, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing great today. How about yourself, Jacob? Doing well. We have uh, quite the interesting week coming up here, huh? <laughs> we do, but first it's got to be the football game tonight, Monday Night Football, before we get to Election Tuesday out there. Of course. We've got Tam Tampa Bay is playing tonight. Who are you rooting but for? I well, I, uh, I'm always a Florida guy. So, <laughs> I had to check um, that, but, right? but, the, but, but I wouldn't necessarily, I don't know what the spread is, but I, I know one of our dinners does, or at least a couple of them do. But I, and let, the spread would have to be pretty gigantic, I think, <laughs> in order to take Tampa tonight. They're playing in Kansas City. Kansas is 7-0. I think we're like 3-4 uh, and four or 4-3 four and three or something like that. And, uh, and it's going to be in the 60s, not so bad. But it's no. going to be pouring rain, supposedly. So there was a guy, I don't know if you saw the uh, Green Bay Detroit game. They were playing in just some amazing rain, torrential rain out there. Well, the thing so, that surprised uh, me. Should, I, I don't yeah. think it bodes well for, for Tampa, but uh, hopefully they, they prove me wrong. The thing that surprised me this week, I watched a little bit of the, the beginning of the UF Georgia game, and UF was actually kind of doing well in the beginning. They and, were. Uh, I, I was like, I'm about to see a miracle here. I had to go do something, and I, I checked the score later. and. No, it kind of resolved the way you thought it would have, which is unfortunate, but uh, exciting game nonetheless. So Yeah, for sure. So I've got a daughter that graduated from UF and a son-in-law that graduated from Georgia. They're both <laughs> out in Georgia. So, uh, you know, so that was pretty fun. Uh, I stayed out of that game. I, you know, Definitely. No family, yeah. I, don't, I don't need to be in that in that mess out there. But, right. but yes, you, you are right. It's going to be an interesting week. Everybody should get out to vote with uh, tomorrow being Election Day. Now, a lot of people have voted. So I, I took advantage. Yeah. This is the first year that I've done the early voting that I can recall out there. So that's nice out of the way. No, have, don't have to deal with lines, all that kind of stuff. Although it was pretty interesting. I've never really waited in the line when I go typically on on a voting day Tuesday. Sure. Yeah, we we went we went to do early voting, assumed it would just be a breeze, and there was a line. So um, I know in any event. So oh, it's interesting. Dan says the spread tonight is nine points. There's not a chance that I would take Tampa Bay with nine points, <laughs> knowing the weather conditions and the uh, and the rain out there. Now maybe <laughs> if the rain doesn't come to fruition, you know, it, it helps out a bit, but. Uh, in any event, so I did say, it, as, you, as you pointed out, we've got a, a, an interesting week with the election. So I thought we would spend a little time uh, this afternoon looking for clues as to what the market's intent is out here, if we can find them. So Absolutely. how about you and I? We play Sherlock Holmes. And uh, in the first chart uh, that I'd like to start with here, it's not a chart that we take a look at uh, very often. Uh, it's a very small portion of the New York Stock Exchange. It is the top 100 U.S. companies. And... Uh, uh, if you want to see, so I put I put the uh, uh, I guess a, a link, although nobody can really touch it or, or click on it to take it to that area. But it's investing.com, and if you want to see the instruments that are inside the uh, to the top U.S. these are U.S. based companies only out here. You can go to that this investing.com website. I'm sure there's others that you can go to get it, and you'll see the different 100 companies that are that are in here. So that's worth noting because the big companies, the reason I put this chart up, we're looking for clues. This chart has got a TD9 count bottom pattern that completed on a Friday of last week. Now, the cool thing about this pattern, what should take place here uh, is, uh, uh, Jacob, is that price should now rally towards this green line out here. That's the oscillator and change line. And that's currently printed at 16, uh, uh, 737. Now, there's no way to trade this indice out here, but this index could tell us quite a bit. So, for example, the bottom of the uh, TD9 count pattern, the very low of that pattern, is at 16,460.93. So, if we see a close below that tomorrow, what this is telling us is that price is going to move lower. So, to negate that pattern in a couple of days' time period and move back towards where price had broken out from at the 15,995 level. Now, if we see that, that's going to be a clue. So, we want to watch tomorrow's close uh, for this instrument. It's before the election. And if we get that break, it's telling us that how how will the how how may the markets react? These are the top uh, U.S.-based companies with inside the New York Stock Exchange. Um, 
top 100 out there. So that's one thing to be taken a look at for a clue. What's another thing to look at for a clue? Well, each of the Dow Jones instruments, or at least each of the ones that I use to track the Dow, that would be the Dow Equity Future Contract, the Dow Cash Indice, the Dow Diamonds, and then the equal weighted ETF, uh, EDOW out there. What you'll see is that TD9 count patterns are going to go ahead and complete for each of these instruments. Much like we took a look at for the New York Stock Exchange Top 100, uh, the, what price should do when you get a bottom, all that really suggests that you should rally up to test resistance. So what resistance would be when we took a look at that index, uh, prior, previously, we, there were no profile levels. I don't have profiles for indices. I do for futures contracts. And so we, we really try to integrate all of those. So, for example, in the uh, Dow Jones uh, equity future contract, YM, the first level of resistance that it would hit would be the bottom of its profile, should in fact it rally. Now, the cool thing is, whatever today's low is for these instruments, people want to note that on their pad of paper or wherever they want to note that. Why? Because if price closes below those, uh, those levels tomorrow, then this pattern will be negated in day one and tells we're headed lower. So if you're if you're asking for a clue, how might the market respond? Well, this would be another instrument or these four instruments would be ones to take a look at. And I put my emphasis probably on the equal weighted Dow, EDOW. And so everybody who, who uh, trades has got free access to that. And the reason is because typically the equal weighted ETF really points the direction of where the indice itself wants to go. But at this stage here, price should rally up towards resistance in the case of the Dow Jones Cash Indice, it'd be 42.513. First level resistance in the Dow Diamonds is going to be 421.32. And for the uh, EDOW, it's 35.58. I'm not saying that price can't get above those levels, but that would be the first battle. And like any you know sport out there, you want to understand where you know where your battles are going to take place. <clears throat> any questions, Jacob, about those two charts? That, uh, no, that no. Please keep going. Shown. Okay. Perfect. So here are a couple of TD9 count bottom patterns since we're talking about TD9 counts out. Here's a few that are worth noting. Coca-Cola, KO is one of them. Uh, that's got a, a daily TD9 count bottom pattern that completed on Friday. We closed below that low. I, I don't know what that is. Uh, people can look that up. That suggests that we'll head lower. The lower area would take us to 62.28. But what should transpire is price should rally to at least 66.54. In the case of Nike, Nike formed a completed a TD9 count bottom pattern on Friday. Price is rallying towards its oscillator and change line in the 78, 80-ish, 90-ish uh, type, uh, 78, 80, I think, uh, type level out there. So we should see that rally. If price can get above that, we ought to see move to 79.87. Uh, Travelers, TRV is a ticker symbol that's forming a TD9 count bottom pattern today. It will complete that pattern tomorrow out there. So that's getting ready to rally. Its first level of resistance would be 246.98. And above that, we'd be looking at 252.51. And finally, Berkshire Hathaway, BRK dot b out there oh, yeah. well it's uh, being uh, crushed today <laughs> and guess what today is the completion of a td9 count bottom pattern these are the stocks the ones that we've taken a look at with td9 counts berkshire hathaway being a fairly good representative of the s p 500 as well out there if we close below those lows tomorrow for berkshire um, for uh, Coke, KO out there. Nike would really have to get crushed and move to the downside in order for that pattern to get negated uh, tomorrow out there. So those are the instruments that I would be looking for for clues. But I've got more. Fantastic. Like. Well, Steve, if, you, if you'd like. Absolutely. Steve, stay right there, folks. We'll be right back with Steve Rhodes after this break. Welcome back, everyone. We are joined right now by Steve Rhodes. Take a look over here at my screen. We have Mastering Probability. That is Steve Rhodes Newsletter. Uh, I really recommend if you have not uh, checked this newsletter out, you're kind of in a great position uh, because it's risk-free for you, okay? If you like it, you get to keep it and it's fantastic and you get this phenomenal analysis from Steve Rhodes. And if for whatever reason it just doesn't work out for you, well, we do have a 30-day money-back guarantee on all first-time subscriptions, but we're betting that it is going to work out for you. Steve, uh, before we went to the break, we're taking a look at some of your charts. I think we were looking at... Uh, Cola, right? Co, Coca Cola. Yeah, Coca. We we're looking at Coke and and a, and a few others. Hey, I forgot to ask you though. Who were you pulling for, Georgia or our University of Florida? Well, so my my dad's a Gator, right? And so okay. just by nature of growing up in that household, it's kind of been inculcated in me. Um, yes. And going against it, just uh, it, it seems sacrilege. Uh, you know, in reality. Um, it's, I, I'm not tied to either, but uh, it is fascinating to kind of watch. And in college football, I think, you know, these kids are, they're still trying to prove themselves. It tends to be a bit more high octane in some certain situations. 
Um, For sure. And so I, you know, I prefer college if I if I ever watch it. So uh, as do I. You know that that's my preference. It's been interesting to see how this year's been playing out uh, yeah. with the uh, yeah. draft portal. You know, in, in all that, and and so far, I'm pleasantly surprised. Uh, I love the way that, especially the Big Ten, I don't know what you call them anymore, Big 18, yeah. but I love the expansion because I love watching those West Coast teams. So, you know, uh, the Big Oregon, uh, Michigan game, uh, you know, Oregon is just a powerhouse. They've been a great team, great, great team for a number of years out there. So it's nice to be able to see them play at like 12 noon, you know, or, or, or 3.30 in the afternoon or something like that. But um, additional TD9 count. So we're kind of focused on the TD9 count pattern uh, this afternoon. We took a look at the uh, top 100 stocks uh, inside the New York Stock Exchange. We took a look at a few other instruments, the Dow instruments uh, that have a, a TD9 count bottom pattern. Here we take a look at the gold, uh, silver, and the GDX. Now the GDX has formed bar number eight today. And as long as price closes below 4151 tomorrow, that's the close of bar number five, it will go ahead and complete uh, I'm sorry, it will it'll confirm a TD9 count bottom pattern tomorrow. Wednesday could be the low of that uh, signal out there. So that's something for people to take and look at. If we take a gold on the daily basis out here, it does have a top. It's got a daily roads momentum indicator top, but nothing has been damaged. Price hasn't even touched support yet. Support or the first level of support will be 27.30.10. Now, what we have to be careful about is that gold also on its weekly time frame completed a TD, well, it will complete the TD9 count top this week. Okay. It formed it, so it's a confirmed pattern out there. And on a TD9 count, the bar following bar number nine can be a higher high or a lower low, depending on whether it's a top or a bottom that we're looking at. And that still validates the account, the, the, uh, the TD9 count pattern out there. So the weekly chart is suggesting that price should pull back and test its oscillator and change line. That's currently printing at 27.26. That number will change by dollars or whatever have you uh, between, uh, you know, over, over the coming hours and days out here. But that's just a general guideline of where price should pull back to. Now, if price holds that level, if in fact gets back there and holds that level, that would be a bullish signal for the weekly time frame for uh, gold. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm preparing a, a special gold and uh, mining uh, stock report that uh, I'm going to have out tomorrow nice. for clients. So I'm going to try to do it before I get out my daily newsletter, but may not be till uh, uh, till a bit later. So this would really be a perfect time. Uh, understanding these TD9 counts as we're coming into the election process for folks to actually uh, give a uh, mastering probability a test drive out there. Absolutely. Um, so you know it's going to be it's going to be a, a a very thorough like like I always uh, do a uh, report. This happens to be the weekly chart and the uh, diagonal arrows that you see on my screen. The blue ones represent other weekly TD9 counts, and this takes us back to 2020 to 2020. And you'll see there's one red arrow where the TD9 count pattern did not work. So they don't always work but if you take a look at this weekly chart we go back to 2020 out there you can see you know it's worth paying attention so it's important to understand this pattern it's under it's important to understand where support is that for these instruments and as well as what's going on inside of the mining sector I'll leave everybody with a few extra seasonal type charts and how the market typically responds um, for the instrument that we're taking a look at for the 10 days after the election so that red vertical line in essence, is going to represent tomorrow. And if we take a look at, this is a chart that takes a look at the S&P 500. It looks at the last 96 years worth of data. Uh, from election standpoint, it includes 23 events, 22 that have already happened. The 23rd will be the one that takes place tomorrow. This typically shows that the way that the S&P 500 uh, responds on average over this 23-year uh, sample size, if you will, is we usually move up for one day. That's perhaps the reaction move to the upside. And then price moves down for the, at least the next five days out there. So that's for the S&P 500. And this is the data that's provided to a great uh, a firm out there called Seasonex. If, you are, if you're into or you want to take a look at uh, seasonal cycle stocks and instruments out there, I really recommend using uh, this company. I used to do a lot of this stuff manually. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's just a matter of identifying the instrument. You know, it's so much nicer, Jacob, to just be able to go to one package where you can see this. The package also, what I did was I took a look at gold because we, we took a look at the GDX as an example and the GDX and gold are directly directionally correlated. We have 56 years worth of data, or we have 13 events, meaning 12, which is what this covers, the 13th being tomorrow. Here, this also shows that we have a one-day move to the upside, and then we start moving to the downside out there. That's its 56-year cycle of election periods. We take a look at light sweet crude. Light sweet crude is traded lower to sideways during the two weeks following the election. 
So, uh, so just simply, it's important to know what the um, what the seasonal cycles are. But it's also, and I'd say more important, to understand the patterns uh, that we uh, take a look at. In our case here today, we took a look at those TD9 counts out there. So that's uh, all that I've got for you. Just one other thing I can share with folks is I mentioned the GDX and that uh, right now it's uh, forming a, uh, a bar number eight of a TD9 count, likely to go on and form a TD9 count bottom. Bar eight can be the bottom of that pattern. What we can see here is in the GDX price is also testing Trendline Resort coming off of the lows from August the uh, 5th out there. So, Jacob, that's Fantastic. all that I've got. A couple of uh, nice little gifts for the listeners out there with regard to some instruments that are forming bottom patterns. Absolutely. Steve, thank you so much. It's always great having you on on these Mondays. I am looking forward to that gold and metals report tomorrow. Uh, no doubt that's going to be interesting to read into. Thank you for coming on, Steve. It will. And what's going to be real interesting is that then it's going to surprise people. I've no. already begun it. I just oh, is going to take a little bit longer. Too, so many surprises so. this week. We're going to find out what they all are. <laughs> exactly, exactly. We'll see. We'll see Jacob, you then, have uh, a great day. Good to yeah, talk to you. You too. We'll see you 11 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow, Steve. A.M. 11 a.m. Let's make it. Let's make it a.m. That sounds a little bit better. Really, uh, huh? TFN at dark. Guy. Take care, Steve.